In this video, I'm going to show you how I installed my kitchen backsplash from this into this. Welcome to Projects with Steve. So, I am finally getting to installing a backsplash in our kitchen. We have been living in our house now for over a year with our new kitchen, but haven't gotten around to putting in a backsplash. For those of you that are new to my channel, I have two other videos that show you the transformation of this kitchen from a very dated 1970s kitchen into what it is now. The videos show you the before and after as well as the in-between construction pictures. One of the videos breaks down all of my costs to remodel this entire kitchen. One of my biggest challenges with this project is that I would like to tile around this window all the way up to the ceiling. Part of being successful at tiling around this window and making it look really professional is starting your tie on the right spot. The grout lines are going to be very noticeable with this tile, so I want the tile sizes on the left and right sides of the window to be balanced. I don't want one side to have very small pieces of tile, while the other side having larger pieces of tile. Since I'm laying the tiles in a brick pattern, this makes it a little more challenging. After taking my time and many measurements, I came up with my plan. If I place my tile in just the right spot, by the time I worked my way to the other side of the window, I could have tiles on the left side that could match the size of one row above on the opposite side of the window. If this is confusing, you can pause the video when you see the tiles are installed around the window. If you are not tiling around a window, then your project should be a lot easier, and finding a good starting point for your first tile will be a lot easier. We decided to go with a very simple white subway tile. This tile and all the supplies I use in this video were purchased at Menards. If you are interested in what the costs for this project were, let me know in the comments section below. I could make a breakdown video that could show you the figures of what doing a project like this could be for your kitchen. Make sure to subscribe to my channel so that you can see when I post new content like this. Here, I am spreading mastic on the wall in the section that I will be installing tiles first. You only want to spread the mastic in the section that you will be working on in the short term. You do not want to have to spread the mastic over your entire backsplash area. Only work in small areas. This helps you to not have dried mastic on the wall before you actually hang tile. It will also help you to keep your job site cleaner. After you spread the mastic, I am then using the trowel side with the ridges to give the mastic a consistent thickness. This helps me to get rid of any spots that have too much mastic and also helps me to see areas that may not have enough mastic. The ridge side of the trowel creates the lines you are seeing in the mastic. Those lines will also help my tiles stick to the wall. You want to use mastic in this project and not a mortar because mastic has some glue-like properties in it. This greatly helps your tiles to stick to the wall right when you place them, preventing the tiles from sliding down the wall while you're working before it even dries. I placed 1 8 inch tile spacers between all the tiles to keep all the spacing exactly the same. As you place the tiles, you want to make sure that you're keeping the tiles level in a straight line. Before you even start setting the tiles, you want to check to see if your countertop is perfectly level or not. If it is not level, and depending on how out of level it is, you may need to adjust your first row of tiles so that you are placing them off of a level line and not the countertop. I did all my cuts using a small wet tile saw. However, this ceramic tile can be cut using a non-motorized tile cutter that scores and snaps the tiles on the scored line. Many people do it this way, but I have a wet saw and I'm comfortable using it. Please hit the like button and share this video with your friends. 
That helps get my videos promoted more on YouTube to help grow my channel to get more viewers. I greatly appreciate it. If you haven't already subscribed, please hit the red subscribe button and you can turn on the bell notifications so you get notified anytime I upload new content. One of my other videos started getting a lot more views in the past few months on YouTube and I have over quadrupled my subscriber count and I am very thankful for that. So a special shout out and a thank you to those of you that are subscribers. I really wasn't expecting the channel to grow as quickly as it has been, but I am very excited and I can't wait to see what the future holds. My projects can also be followed on Facebook and Instagram. Just do a search for Projects with Steve to follow me on both of those social media platforms. I continued my tiles on the side wall. Where the tiles end at the front of the cabinets, I used tiles with a bull nose side and framed it out. This gives the backsplash a smooth transition from the drywall to the start of the tiles. I also used tiles with the bull nose side to them when I tiled around the window. Since this tile that I purchased at Menards did not have a tile offering a bull nose on the 3 inch side of the tile, I had to take larger tiles and cut them down to the subway tile size in order to achieve the look I was going for. Here's the kitchen before the tiles were grouted. chose to go with dark grout. I wanted the grout lines to really have a contrast to the white tiles. Here I'm using a float, working the grout into the spaces between the tiles, filling them as much as I can. Once I have the spaces filled with the grout, I use the long side of the float to scrape away the excess grout that is sitting on top of the tiles. After I scrape the excess grout off a section of the wall, I go over it with a damp sponge. I typically only do a couple passes with the sponge, and then I clean the sponge off with either a bucket of water or in a sink. When I scrape with a float and clean with the sponge, I wipe at a 45 degree angle. The goal here is to clean the tiles without pulling out the grout, and wiping at a 45 degree angle helps to do this. Here is the finished project after I let the grout dry overnight and then went back over it again with the sponge to really give the tiles a good cleaning. What do you think? Would you attempt to install a kitchen backsplash in your kitchen? These small ceramic tiles are really pretty simple to work with. They aren't hard to cut and they can easily adhere to the wall. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know in the comments section below. Please subscribe to my channel if you have not already done so. I would greatly appreciate that. If you can recommend this video or any of my others to your family and friends, this would really help me to grow my channel. I was missing a few bullnose tiles on the day this video was taken. That's why you see a few tiles missing around the window. Those tiles have since been installed. Remember to check out my other videos that show you the before pictures as well as the process of turning the original 1970s kitchen into what it is today. The link to those videos will be in the description section as well as links to them at the end of this video.
Thanks for watching, and I will see you on my next project.